Hey guys, it's been a while, but I think it's time for another one. That's right, we are going to flip a chair. Welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I recently resigned as a full-time kindergarten teacher and now I am here as the Furniture Flipping Teacher to show you how I take old and outdated furniture and give it a new purpose and a new life in hopes of inspiring a creative way for you out there to also earn an extra income or maybe update the furniture in your own home. I am so thrilled because we are back with another chair flip. It has been since May that I did a chair flip, you guys. That is so long and I've been dying to do another one. It's not that I haven't found some chairs, but I finally found one that I wanted to flip on the channel and this one's a little bit different than I have done in the past because it is not velvet. That's right, I chose to do a chair that I don't normally choose to do, but something struck me that I needed to do this chair. And let me show you what it was. These legs right here, look at those. Oh my gosh, those right there. When I lifted the skirt to this chair, I knew I had to have this chair because those mid-century legs, those style of legs are very trendy right now. And even though this chair isn't velvet and it might not have those mid-century vibes, this is going to be such a cute chair once I rip that ugly skirt off. So let's get to it. As you guys know, chair flips are some of my favorite flips. One, because they're super easy, and two, because they usually can turn a pretty good profit if you get the chair for the right price in the beginning, which I got this chair for $13 at a thrift store, so I think we started off on the right foot. The first thing that I'm gonna do, like I said, is go ahead and rip off this skirt down here. So I had one of our viewers send me some shears, and I feel, a little bit um, out of sorts because these are really the real thing like shears fabric cutters they are sharp and i haven't used them yet so i'm a little nervous but you know i was struggling with my two dollar scissors and so thank you for the shears it's time where does i'm gonna like i always do kind of just stick my scissors down in there and kind of pry it up just a little bit and then i always just like to cut down okay i've never done it with these scissors before i don't know if it's gonna work i think maybe if i start this way it might go a little faster and easier hopefully i think there's just so many layers of fabric right there let me get a better angle here there we go, we're getting there. Whew, I'm rusty, you guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. We got our two parts and we're gonna go ahead and start ripping. Remember the goal is to try and get all the staples out. I got most of them out with this, but then the little seam cover is sticking and it's separating from the skirt part. So the staples are kind of staying. It's okay, we'll just go back later with our needle nose pliers and get those out. Ooh, a third reason I like these flips because they uh, test your muscles. You gotta pull hard to get these out. I always try to see how many staples I leave in and I try to leave them the least possible. This one is leaving eh, a good amount, not too, too bad. Sorry for the birds, we can't really do much about it. We're working on seeing if we can get someone to come out here and get the birds. It's just chirping away up there. You can also just use pliers. Right now, all I've got is my needle nose pliers. Moving into the workshop, I kind of lost a lot of my tools because I was using my dad's tools. 
So I've got to look into getting myself some real tool, a real tool set, things like pliers, screwdrivers, all that good stuff. So just ripping off that skirt took me less than five minutes. And if I would have started using the pliers sooner, I probably would have gotten done faster. I forgot, it's just rusty. All right, last step before we get to cleaning is to just take out the staples from the bottom. So that's all you do. Needle nose pliers are just the easiest because you can kind of get in there. If staples are stuck, like a real staple should still stay in there and not sticking out like this, you can just shove your needle nose part in there and yank it out. That's why the needle nose is the most efficient. $13 for a chair. Really quick, I wanna shout out Catherine for sending us these mats. There's only 12 of them on the ground right now, but there's tons more in the box. And it's just really helping to kind of save my knees. This chair flip was the first time that I'm using them and just being on the floor instead of having to be on the direct concrete here in our workshop, it's a lifesaver. So shout outs to Catherine. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate everyone who checks out our Amazon wish list. But not only that, I just appreciate all of you as supporters of FFT. Sometimes the staples break. So like that one was in there all the way and then I just broke it in half. So you gotta be careful and just make sure you get it all, all out. These silver staples, I'm pretty sure are supposed to stay there because they are holding that fabric to the leg itself. So I'm just gonna leave those in. But any excess fabric down here, strings and stuff, I'll come back and kind of trim that up. And since this isn't velvet, I will probably even take my little sweater razor thingy and get all of these little wispies off as well. are golden on the staples. I'm just gonna throw all these away. Look at that. Doesn't it just look 10, 20, 30 times better already? And then when I clean it, it's just gonna brighten up the color blue even more. I'm gonna clean it and I'm going to kind of just get rid of all of the little sweater balls that, you know, the ones that kind of just form as, as time goes on and I just want to get rid of it and kind of clean all that up and then we'll be ready to post it. Guys, this is almost done. Let's get to cleaning. So this is the little shaver that I was talking about. It's electric, so I just plugged it in. This one was also sent via the Amazon wish list a couple of months back. And this is the first time that we're breaking it out. And so let's see how it works. I'm mostly gonna focus around the spots where I tore off the skirt because that's where the fabric got ripped up mostly, but there are a few other spots where I'm gonna do some touch-ups. So last time I had a chair with this similar material, I actually physically took out a razor and Neiman thought I was the most crazy person shaving a chair, but it actually worked just as well as, if not better than this thing. And we had put it on our Instagram story and he, he got, um, he got told basically that that was a thing and and so now this is just bringing back some memories that chair wasn't on the channel but we had put it on instagram 
you don't follow us over there, be sure to head over there and follow us at Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm almost done with this. It's taking quite a bit of that top layer of lint and just any of the snags that are there. It's taking all that off pretty nicely. So I'm gonna finish that up and then we'll bring out the Bissell. All right, all of our little sweater pills are gone. And so the last step is to grab the Bissell and clean her up. Really quick, I just wanted to show you all that that kind of got off there. Ooh, it's dust, but it's also those kind of pilly thingies. That is gross. Can't wait to clean and see what dirty water we get out of it. Got my vacuum out. It's been a while since I brought this boy out. I've already got it all squared away, water in there, cleaner in there, everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and spray down the chair and the cushion, and then we'll get to sucking out all that dirt and you guys, I know you can't wait to see that dirty water. This is the clean water compartment, which I put the water in to the line, and then I also add in some cleaner. And it has some lines to tell you um, how much to put in there. And then I just got the Bissell cleaner and also put that in there. And then this is the dirty water compartment. So once we suck it through the vacuum, it will end up in here and then that's when you guys will be able to see the dirty water. I will link this vacuum down below on Amazon. They don't have the green ones, but they have the exact same thing and it's just blue. So I'm gonna link it down below in the description. If you guys are interested, I recommend the Bissell. It's very easy to maneuver around. It's small, compact, instead of having a big, huge vacuum. And of course, it also does a great job cleaning. Let's spray some water. We are finished up with cleaning with the Bissell. Are you guys ready for this? I see lots of dirty water. Ah, it's leaking. Let's take it outside and dump it. Ew, dirty water. <laughs> So that right there shows you exactly why you need to clean the chairs before you even think about listing them. I am gonna do some touch-ups on the legs now. We're gonna go ahead and flip the chair over so that I have a better angle on the legs. I'm gonna be using a new product, well, new to me product, and it's called Restore a Finish. I got this from the Melange website, so if you are unfamiliar, Melange is a paint company, and they've also got a bunch of other products on their website. You can use my code FLIP10 for 10% off of all of Melange products and everything else on their website as well. So there's a couple of products that you need in order to use the Restore a Finish. I'm gonna have a glove. I'm gonna have some steel wool, really, really fine steel wool. I think it's triple zero. And then a lint-free cloth to wipe it back. So I'm gonna go ahead and glove up. That's just to protect your hands. And then open it up. This one is just the natural neutral color. So that means that it's just gonna restore whatever I've got here. I'm pretty sure they've got different finishes and different shades as well, but this one's just looks to be clear. So we'll pour it onto my steel wool and then I'm just going to rub it on and then see how that brings back the finish of the wood. Restore a finish. So that looks awesome. So I'm gonna do that with all four legs and then I'm gonna wipe back with my lint-free cloth. So 
so basically what it did is it shined it up and it gave it some moisture so that it can bring back that stain and now I'm just gonna wipe it back with any of that excess so that it kind of soaks in this is another option instead of actually restaining the legs like I've done in the past this just brings it back it's a lot quicker it's a lot less messy and it looks just as good if not better because it's keeping that original color now that we are finished cleaning and restoring the legs i'm going to put this out in the sun for a little bit for two reasons one to help it dry a little bit faster and two it also helps just eliminate any of those last minute germs that are still on the chair Okay, that'll dry out here uh, for a little while, a couple hours probably. And we don't have any traffic up here, any non people, like any people that we don't know uh, come up here. So I'm not worried about anything happening to the chair. And so we'll come back in a few hours and get it staged and post it on Facebook Marketplace. After letting the chair sit outside for a few hours, I brought it inside to the garage, but then it was dark. So of course we had to wait for better lighting for some staging. So we're back here next day and I am gonna just stage this just kind of to make it cute and to make it cozy. So I put some greenery here next to it. Greenery is always very appealing to the eye. I also received this blanket from my Amazon wish list several months ago. And since it's been so long since I've done chairs, this is actually the first time that I'm busting it out. And I just thought that this type of blanket is just cozy and will be perfect to go over a chair for some staging. So I'm just gonna drape it over nicely to give it some texture, character, and all of the above, and just some a little bit of extra coziness. Of course, we'll take photos with the blanket and the plant, and then we'll take some without. That way, the person and the people who are looking at this on Marketplace can see that there are no imperfections about this chair. There's no stains, there's no rips, tears, or any of that. Just kinda wanna make it as natural looking as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and take some photos and then we will talk about how much I'm gonna list this for. I always wanna remind you that you don't always have to have a fancy camera to take photos of the pieces that you've flipped. You can also just use your cell phone. It takes just fine photos and then if you want to, you can use the, the app Lightroom and that can kinda of help you edit them a little bit to make them look the best that they can. But remember, you don't want to edit them too much because you want the piece to look true to what it actually looks like in person. And as always, save yourself a little bit of time by not having to edit as much. And you know what I'm going to say? You need to make sure you have great lighting. Just a little bit of a demonstration of what we're doing right now until we build our staging wall, which hopefully is gonna be coming really soon, is we've got some light over here from this window and it's not harsh light. That means that the, the sun isn't directly shining into that window, giving us any harsh lighting. It's a very soft daylight. And then also we've got the room lights up here. It's also a much softer daylight. It's not that warm light. And then we've also got a light over here that is reflecting some of the ceiling down to the chair as well. And then I'm gonna make sure not to get into any of the shadows when I am taking photos so that you know I can't see my own shadows on the furniture. You wanna just make sure to get all those details. So I'm gonna focus on the legs for a couple of the photos and just how beautiful those legs are. And then also just focus on the color of the chair itself, get different angles. And then of course, I'm gonna do it with everything unstaged so that they can see all of the chair. I always say it's important to remember that Facebook Marketplace, if that's where you're posting, they allow 10 photos. So be sure to try to utilize every single one of those photo slots. So it looks like I need two more photos here. 
I think I'm just gonna go up to some details here in the back of the chair so they can tell that it's there's no stains or rips. So that's it for my staging and photos. And now I'm gonna sit here and do a little bit of editing, but not too much because we've got great lighting in here. And then let's talk real quick about how much I'm gonna list this chair for. So this one is just a little bit different than the ones that I usually do, the velvet. I am thinking that this is kind of like a smaller chair and I think it would be perfect for like a reading nook or something like that. And I actually am, kind of sad that we're gonna get rid of it, but I am gonna list it on Facebook Marketplace for $150. That is a pretty good profit after paying $13 for it. That'll give me right around $135 profit, and all I did was spent about an hour or so with ripping the skirt off, cleaning it up, and taking some photos. So that's what we're gonna try it at, and I'll let you guys know what happens. The chair is gone. So I listed it on the day after I flipped it around three o'clock and then it sold within about five hours. I'm back to the chairs, you guys. I miss them. It's been a couple of months. Props to my mom for encouraging me to do another chair. And yes, I actually do have quite a few in stock. We've got some fun ideas coming up for you guys with chairs. After paying $13 for the chair and then getting $150 for the chair, we are coming out with a profit of about $137. So that is a pretty good turnaround for an hour, maybe even two hours of ripping off the skirt and cleaning the chair. It's really a great profit for a minimal amount of work. That is one reason that I love chairs, as I told you guys before. July is coming to an end, and so you guys know what that means. We have our end of the month recap video, and just like we did last month, we thought that our live stream was very well received, and we had a really great time just chatting with you guys on that live stream. So we are going to be hosting another live stream but it's going to be at a different time we are going to be doing it on Sunday August 1st at 2 p.m. Central Time. During the live stream, we will be talking all things furniture. We'll be answering your guys' questions as well as our end of the month numbers. And then of course, last but not least, we will be announcing the giveaway from our Dixie Bell premiere and our collab with Pretty Distressed. If you haven't watched those, then be sure to head over and watch both of those videos. We had an awesome time collabing with Christina in Tennessee, but we would love you guys to just come over and hang out with us on Sunday. So be sure to get subscribed. And then also you might've noticed behind me that there's a little bit of a new addition to our shop. We're not gonna show you too much of it, but be sure to tune in on Monday night because I am going to be showing you guys how to build a staging wall under $100. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys just remember that chairs are some of the easiest flips and turnarounds out there. So get out there, find yourself a chair. It doesn't even have to be velvet, but just make sure it has those legs because those seem to really sell well. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the flip side.